Hi guys! Tonight we're going to get back to the engine work and uh, we're going to be putting some hoses back on to my engine. I haven't aligned the engine properly yet and I also I have a little bit of fine tuning left to do on one of the engine mounts so um, I'm, I don't want to remove all of this because um, I don't need to to get access for this project. I'm going to be putting five hoses onto the engine. The first one is going to connect the coolant reservoir to the manifold. The second hose I need to connect is from the heat exchanger also to the manifold. And the third hose I need to connect is from the manifold to the uh, water thermostat housing. And the last hoses I'm going to be replacing because I had to cut through them in order to remove them is the hose going from the raw water pump to the sea strainer. And to do that, I have to put fittings onto the raw water pump. I got a new Oberdorfer pump. Uh, this engine comes with a Sherwood pump. I changed out the original Sherwood pump on the engine. All universals have them. Um, for an Oberdorfer pump because even though there wasn't anything really wrong with my Sherwood pump it had a slight leak in it and I was gonna have to um, reseal the cover plate for it. Um, I decided to use that as an opportunity to um, change it out entirely because there is a track record with Sherwood pumps like first of all they're really hard to get access to the impeller. Um, you kind of have to take off the entire face of the pump um, to do that. And secondly, they have been known to seize up um, unexpectedly after, you know, there usually there's many hours on the engine when that happens, but when it does, it can, because the raw water pump is connected to the, the belt and the pulleys, when the raw water pump, when they seize up like that, they um, they cause the whole belt to seize up. So the other, um, uh, like the pulley where it's attached to, it can cause the entire um, camshaft of the engine to snap. And that would cause like a catastrophic engine failure and then you have to like go into the engine with magnets to like get all the pieces out from where it snapped and it's just a total disaster so and like since there's enough people who've reported this happening um I decided I wanted to do this preventatively and I wanted to get an Oberdorfer pump because they have a really great reputation for a for not seizing up and b for being really accessible whenever you want to change the impeller all you have to do is take off the little front plate and with three screws and, and put it back on. So once I've got the fitting screwed back onto the Oberdorfer pump, um, I'm going to put this, this, I had to cut this hose, so I have a new hose already to replace this. I'm going to put on here and going to the fitting here. This is from the C-strainer. Um, and then the other hose going from here to the fitting here from the engine. I'm also going to have to replace that because I do believe I cut into this hose before. Or maybe I didn't. We'll see. We'll see if it reaches and then we'll know if I cut it. I'm afraid I'm gonna make this pump. That's what. Okay, so the parts that we're trying to take off this thing are not. this thing. Yeah. And this thing. Mm -hmm. And we tried on the boat to unscrew them, but we couldn't. So we're gonna pinch them. Oh, yeah, Erin, you kind of have to come into the video at some point. Like I'm in said, here. I'm in here, bro. Like we talked about. We got cover dogs. 
puffer doodle. Okay, I don't have any purpose here. I'm just here. You're just here because Aaron wants you. That's right. Get it more in there. Yeah. There. See, now I can be like your cheerleader. You're like, I like the days when you were quiet behind the camera. I like cheerleaders. Like, I think. Why did I? Why, why the fuck did I bring this? If it. <laughs> I asked you to make sure you had the right tool. I fucking thought I did. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> there you go. This works. It works. Okay. Hey. <laughs> it was either going to really work or really not work, and it worked. <laughs> everything's fine now. Just in that moment, I know everything's going to be fine. Didn't hurt you though, did it? No, I'm just frustrated. Cause I don't have, this has so much more leverage than this. You know? It doesn't fucking work. It's not the right size. So. Mm, there it is. It, I think it's gonna strip. Yeah, it's gonna strip. See, I can already feel it turning, rounding this corner out. It's mm. gonna strip. Yeah, it's just gonna. Okay, me and Asada will wait here. Will you go all the way back to the boat to get one tool? I don't even think I. I don't even know if I have the tool. Oh. Like I don't know if I have the. Should I try with my weak arms? Yeah. You can be in the video. It's like opening on me. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> crunchy crunch. Yeah. It's not good. Don't be crunchy. Crunchy crunch. Oh, I'm literally, I feel like I'm just grinding it out. Exactly. That's exactly how I felt. <sighs> yeah. It sucks. It's not good. Mm -hmm. You don't have the right size on the boat? I think, no, I skip over that size. What do you mean you skip over it? Like my tool collection has a gap in it. Oh. Like I'm missing a size. That's what I mean. Like that big one is totally just gonna, that's just gonna round, round out the corners. It's just yeah. gonna, you know? Totally. Work. something else in my backpack that I don't know. A surprise tool. Ew, there's an old apple. Ew. <laughs> what did you just throw? I threw the apple. 
in the water. I threw an old apple from my backpack in the water. This is a standard fitting. That's what really pisses me off. Because I could have gotten it today. I could have just picked one up. God. Should we ask that guy if he has another rib? Absolutely. She, she went too quickly, but we're going to go ask. We're really going somewhere and coming back. No, we're gonna stop the security van and ask them for tools. And then that's come back here? That's, yeah, that's what the guy told me. Okay. Yeah. So Sarah ran this truck down to ask. We're gonna follow him to the office because... We're gonna follow him to the marina office because he thinks there might be a 7 8 inch wrench. A 7 8 He thinks there might be a 7 8 inch wrench there. <laughs> Seven eighth inch wrench. Thought you were the tongue twister queen. With your what was it the other day that I made you say that you said perfectly easily? I don't know. Catch, I, but I remember catch I know tripod. Forgot what it was. Catch your tripod. Catch your tripod. Catch your tripod. Catch your tripod. Amazing what happens when you just reach out for help. Okay, Speedy. The hell? You just do a serious drive by, walk by. <laughs> give us a little, give us a little something. I got a seven eight cent wrench. It's amazing what happens when you just make the first move to reach out for help. It leads you down a rabbit hole of helpful people. As your dog yaks on grass. Ugh. Come on, bud skis. But no, they just throw it up. Yeah. So Aaron, are you learning that the majority of boat work is just like finding the right size wrench and figuring out how to loosen things or tighten things? Yeah. <laughs> Starting to catch on. You strike me as a person who would be prepared. Like you'd have all the tools. You'd make sure of that first. I don't know. Because you have your whole caboodle and everything. Yeah. You have a caboodle of tools and you have them all in a row. I know, and I really hate when I can't find things. Like, everything is in its place because it drives me crazy when I can't find things. Yeah. Alright guys, this is it. We've got the right wrench. <sighs> oh my god, I'm so lucky. I got it to go just as it was stripping out. <sighs> It moved just as it was starting to strip out. Ugh. <laughs> you see, yeah. there's a gap here. Yeah, yeah. Like just when it was starting to do that, it started turning. Nice. So I'm so lucky. Get it. So lucky. Yes, we're saved. We can do this. We should tell the guy he was completely right. never done anything like that before so I, I would never have thought you really got me <laughs> you okay I'm fine <laughs> <laughs> well that woke me up now I can work <laughs> okay. somebody left it there for later they're airing it out. I guess so. Letting all the COVID die in the sun. Mm.
Oh, is this gonna happen? God fucking damn it. I'm gonna have to take off the manifold, but I don't wanna fucking do that tonight. Um, so right now, I cannot get the one and an eighth inch little hose piece to go on the barb on the manifold without taking off the manifold so that I can like put it on and then it bends because the fittings are like that you just can't get it on unless you put it on first and then put the manifold back on but I don't want to take off the manifold right now it's like 3 a.m. we've been working for a long time and taking that manifold is hard I mean you remember you can even look at my video from like two months ago or three months ago. I take apart my engine solo, you know, and that was all about like most of that video was me taking off the manifold. It took me like all day because of where the nuts are located. You can't even get to them. So I had to get like a crow foot wrench and then when it didn't work, I had to get like one of those curvy wrenches. Um, and I had to use all these, I had to use like articulating sockets and adapters to get to the, the nuts underneath it. And I had to be really careful not to hit the starter motor. And my power is plugged in right now too. So I don't want to have to, I'm going to be here until like at least 6 a.m. if I do that. And my videographer is, is like falling asleep. So like, and so am I. Um, so this is just going to have to be a two-part episode. This is going to have to continue it next week. So have a good night. And also... I just want to let you know that from our episode last week where we had a conversation about Erin and what got her into sailing and we talked to each other, um, we have some deleted scenes that didn't quite make the cut. Uh, and they are on Patreon. Uh, specifically, we get more into talking about um, racial issues and being black women in the sailing community. So if that sounds like something you want to hear about, then I hope you will uh, become a patron. You can start for as little as a dollar a month. If you become a sea anemone, or if you want to go full on pilot fish uh, for 20 bucks a month, that's also an option at the other end of the spectrum. But either way, I really appreciate you and have a good week.